you guys get to use the tea table that you have in your book. Do you guys know that, car that cart you guys have, your table you have? So those of you that have your book or have that information, good. Good for you. Okay? Good for you. Because we're going to look at that tea table. So if you have your book, get out your book. If you want to go to my website and print out a tea table, it's actually there. Or the chart, it's actually there. You can print it out. But this is your tea table. Okay? It is A3 in your book, T distribution critical values. Okay? So here's, this, here's what we're going to do. If you look at that table, you guys see what's written up here? For alpha, the level significance, you see what's written up here? Yeah, it says one tail and it says also what? Two tails, good. You're going to look at the two tail alpha values. Because this is estimation and it's going back to our warm up. These are two tails. Now, you may see that top portion that says one tail. Well, that's for the next chapter. So we're going to use this process still for both what? Chapters. T table, Z table, chapter 7, chapter 8. So those of you guys that don't do any homework, if you still refuse not to, if you still refuse to, to not do any of this, it's going to bite you twice as hard. Okay? Meaning if you're not going to do the T table or Z table or do any of this stuff, then you're going to see it in chapter 8 also. So we're going to see it for the rest of the semester. Okay, so you might as well do it right now. Okay, so two tail alpha, degree of freedom, this is what's going to be used to answer the question. Okay, so for example, in this question, what's the degree of freedom in this example? Why is it 10, Lauren? Exactly. N minus 1. N is 11. Degree of freedom is what? 10. So this is going to be your, your row. It's the 11, uh, sorry, it's the 10th row. What about the column? What does it say for the column? Can't see that. What does it, what does it say on your t-table column? Does it say area in two tails? Oh, it's not alpha. Oh, it is alpha. I'm sorry. So, what's alpha? What is the value of alpha if we're talking about the 99% confidence level? Right? Well, exact, well what is it? Let's go back and think. 99% confidence level, wasn't this 1 minus alpha? Or, isn't that right? So what's the value of alpha? Should I draw that picture again? They're saying this is 99%. If this is 99%, what is the sum of the tails? What is that sum going to be? Let's go back. This is 99% that's not shaded. What percent is shaded? No? 1%. 99 1% plus 1% is what? 100. Is that right? You guys okay with that? So it's 1%. What's 1% as a decimal? 0 0.01. 0 0.01. So what are you going to look for here as a column? You're looking for the 0 0.01 column. Ladies and gentlemen, the column is simply the level of significance. That was it. We went through all those definitions in our warm up. What's that? And so tell me, what value is in the 0 0.01 column and the 10th row? What is it? 3.16. Anybody second that? OK. Lady, that's what you're looking for. That's your critical value. That's the hardest part of what you're doing. Well, let's put it all together now. 3.16 what? 9. Okay. 
Is it 3.169? No. What does it say in the book? Let's see. On the T table. Okay. 3.169. Okay. So here we go. Where is our, oh, here it is. See this? 3.169. That is your critical value. Everything else is exactly the same as before. So to point out what's new is you have a T table, and when do you use that T table? The sample is what? Small. What's a small sample? Less than 30. What do you think it's going to be under your homework? Small sample. So that section of small sample, you're going to use the T table. Um, so you're going to have to be able to use the Z table. You're going to have to be able to use the T table. And we're going to give you another table called the chi-square table. So at this portion of the course, there's good news and bad news. The good news is there's not all that tedious calculation. But there's tables to use. And it's a matter of you learning and practicing that process. Is there anything anybody could just say to you that makes it all easier for you? The answer is no. There isn't anything anybody else can say that will make it. You're still going to have to, regardless of what the situation is, go through the what? The process. OK, so we can finish this problem if you like. You guys want to finish the problem? All right, we'll finish it. Let's write it down. X bar minus E, less than mu, less than X bar plus E. Here's our format. Our error is going to be T alpha over 2, S over the square root of N. And what is T? 3 point what? 3.169. What's the standard deviation? Eleven. How do you know it's eleven thousand? It says it's eleven thousand. Okay. What's the sample size? Eleven. Good. So the margin of error is going to be plug all these values in your calculator: three point one six nine times eleven thousand square root of eleven. What's your error going to be? What is it? Ten thousand. Five hundred and ten dollars. This is money, so go out to the nearest penny. Thirty-eight cents. Ten thousand five hundred and ten dollars and thirty-eight cents is the error. Okay. Now, how do we get that? Plug in all those values. Three point one six nine times eleven thousand. Oh, you did times the square root of eleven divided by the square root of eleven. Okay, you see why this is a good calculator to have. Remember, I suggested you guys get something like this. See why this is so good? Oh, you erased it. Because I just looked at the top. I just looked at the top, and what did you guys see? I see multiplication and not division. So you could go back on a test situation, you could go back and double check and go, oh, OK. OK, so it's not times the square root of 11 divided by the square root of 11. It's a good deal. OK? We're not done. The error is simply plus or minus what? $10,510.38. That's your error. So plug it now. Now you're, you're happy. Plug it all in. Right? I know it's going to be hard to see, but I'll try to sneak it in here. It'll be the 35,000, right? Minus the 10,510.38. It'll be the 35,000 plus the 10,510.38. What do you guys get in your what do you guys get as an answer? We'll put it right here. Twenty-four thousand. Four hundred and eighty-nine dollars. Sixty-two cents. That's the lower bound. Let's write it. Let's write it over here. 
Let's write it over here so we can um, get it all in. $24,489.62 is less than mu, less than what? What is it? $45,510 and what? 38 cents. We can say this with 99% confidence. So in summary, we can think of it this way. Let's summarize it this way. That the true mean repair cost, the true mean is somewhere between $24,489.62 and $45,510.38 for a Lamborghini. This 99% confidence here, all we're saying is this. If you go out and take a sample, an arbitrary large number of sample, size of 11 of Lamborghinis, crash them, repair them, get the repair bills, okay? 99% of the time, that sample mean, where was it? In this case, 35,000. 99% of the time, it's gonna be a value that lives between $24,489.62, $45,510.38. So what's happening is, you don't have to buy 250 Lamborghinis, only buy what? 11. And you could do the same process, get the same set of information, but with a small sample. Isn't that better than spending all that money if you didn't have to? The answer is yes. Okay, so the reason a T distribution exists is to approximate the normal distribution but under small sample sizes. And what that means for us is we have to learn how to look at another table. Not hard. The row now is the degree of freedom. What's the definition? One less than the sample size. The column is just your level of significance, alpha. Okay? You guys have questions on that one? So here's what I'm going to have you guys do. Because um, I think the hardest part was really to do what? What do you think the hardest part of all this is? I think I know those answers. You're going to say everything. But you want to know why everything? You, I mean, you guys should be here on time. It's like I said, if you're not here, do I have any sympathy? No. No. Is that a mean thing to say? It doesn't matter. Z, they're both critical values. Hold on, let's get back to that concept. You say, what's the hardest part? Here's the thing. You're going to need to go through this what? Process. You may say, oh, I've got better things to do. Hey, you know what? So do I. You're going to have to go through the process. You weren't born knowing the process. Nobody was. We weren't born knowing this process. So you're going to have to go through the process and practice the process. And even if you said, oh, but this process has 10 steps, or maybe it has 11, or 12, or 20 steps, that doesn't change the fact that you've got to go through the what? Process, whether it's 5 steps, 10 steps, 15 steps, 20 steps. That's what it is. So you go through the process, and you practice. Um, and that's where we're at. So, so fine, this is sort of, a, at the, again, we're going to get at the end of the semester, and this is where it's sort of panic time for people. Um, I, I, just, I got news for you. I'll, I'll let you guys know when you guys have your in-class test, test four, you got a take-home test, test five, then you got your final exam, you guys are going to be like panicking, and you're like, oh my God, my life's over, but yet you go to parties, 